Hi guys, it's Dr. Eload from stepandrun.com and we'll be continuing our section on immunology and resident macrophages. In this video, we'll be having a look at microglia and their role in the CNS. So, very briefly reminding ourselves about our resident macrophages. We have our circulating monocyte in the blood and then it moves out into the tissues and depending into which depending on which tissue it moves out into it gives us our various resident macrophages from our cup for cells to our osteoclasts and everything in between and we'll be having a closer look at microglia here which are of course the resident macrophages in your CNS now the CNS in itself is very different it's very unique from all the other organs where we have resident macrophages and as such we see that our microglia which are the resident macrophages in the CNS have different characteristics okay and what makes the CNS unique and different from everywhere else is that your CNS which is your brain and your spinal cord is very highly isolated and it's a so-called immune privileged area okay and what does this mean it's an immune privileged area well it means that our brain and our spinal cord our CNS is very protected from other infections that might be going on around the body and this is thanks to your blood brain barrier now this barrier is created by endothelial cells endothelial cells that surround CNS blood vessels okay and those endothelial cells are organized in such a way that they're very close to each other okay the gaps in between them are very very small and the way that this is achieved is through tight junctions and these tight junctions consist of complex proteins such as your junction adhesion molecules um, your claudins oculidin etc and what this means is that only small very small hydrophobic molecules such as your oxygen um, carbon dioxide are able to pass through the gap in between the endothelial cells and for bigger things that we need such as glucose and hormones etc you have various transporters that actively carry these molecules across the blood-brain barrier now the benefit of this is that things that we don't want such as bacteria toxins etc are unable to cross they're unable to pass through the gap they're too big okay and the most effective form of protection is to prevent the the pathogen from getting there in the first place okay and this is why uh, the CNS is such an immune privileged area and as well as that it houses our most important organs which are our brain and our spinal cord now in regards to the blood-brain barrier there's another point to be made now these endothelial um, cells are so close together that the gap is so small and what this means is that even antibodies are unable to cross the majority of them are just simply too large to pass through the gap and because these antibodies are antibodies are unable to cross our CNS phagocytes have to adapt and they adapt in such a way that they become highly effective and highly sensitive to any unwanted pathogens and to tissue damage that might be going on and those phagocytes in the CNS are your microglia so what is the microglia well here's a lovely picture of it here it's our CNS phagocyte it's derived from the monocyte our resident macrophage and it's described as having small irregular nuclei and relatively little cytoplasm so you can see that the cytoplasm is relatively small and it has these extending arms that extend from the surface of the cell 
Now, because these cells are derived from our monocyte, they have important roles in phagocytosis and antigen presentation. Now, the microglia, like the rest of our antigen presenting cells, they express MHC class 2, major histocompatibility complex class 2, which presents antigen to our CD4 cells. Now, these microglial cells, or these microglia, are said to um, not stain, they're not easily discernible in missile stain. Okay, and missile stain is the stain that's used to identify different nervous cells. And the microglial cells are not easily discernible. Okay, so that's characteristically how your microglial cells are described. Small irregular nuclei, little cytoplasm, extending arms, and not easily discernible in missile stain. Okay. And the rest of the other features are just similar to your other macrophages. Phagocytosis, and they express MHC class 2 for antigen presentation. But there's another important thing regarding microglia that you have to know, especially if you're doing uh, your step 1, and that is that HIV-infected microglia, they fuse together and they form these multinucleated giant cells in the CNS. Okay, the giant cell is just a culmination of several different microglia fusing together, joining together. So you get these multinucleated giant cells. And this happens when you have HIV infection going on. Okay, so pretty straightforward stuff. Um, in the next video, we'll go ahead and continue and have a look, a quick look at our alveolar macrophages and hopefully finish off resident macrophages as soon as possible so that we can move on and have a look at how macrophages respond to infection and inflammation, which is their most important role, as well as antigen presentation. So we'll be getting to that in the next few videos. Okay guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned.